All right, so let's take a look at all the settings that we have with the ER9X firmware on the TH9X radio transmitter. So let me power on the radio. So if I press the plus button, I can enter the radio setup settings. So the first we have radio setup display. So in here we can change the display settings like the contrast and the light switch. I don't have a backlight so I'll turn that off. Then we have a few more settings for the backlight. Then we have the audio haptic feature. So if I want I can adjust the volume. So I don't have the haptic mode, but I'll adjust the beeper settings so that I can hear the beeps and I can change the beep sound. So currently that's set to beeper. Then we have Pi speaker, then beeper voice and Pi speak voice or something like that. Then we have the mega sound. I'll leave this to beeper and if you want you can change the pitch of the speaker and various other settings i'll turn on the minute beep then we have the alarms so the battery warning alarm i'll set that to 10.5 volts because i'm using a 3s lipo battery Then in the general settings, you can add a name that will be displayed on the splash screen, but at the bottom. So I don't need this and I'll clear that. I'll disable splash name. And if you want, you can even disable the splash screen from here. So I have that enabled. If you want, you can disable the port scroll option from here. Then we have the controls. So in the cross trim option, if I enable this option and if I press the trim button over here, the trim settings will be adjusted for the right stick. And similarly, if I press this trim button, the trims will be adjusted for the left stick. So if you want, you can use that, but I won't be using that. And we have the throttle reverse option and then the channel order. So I'll have to set this to AETR again. And then the mode so I'll leave this to two and if you want you can add a custom name for the sticks then here we can calibrate the gimbals and the pots so let's do that so after setting the sticks and the pots to the midpoints I'll move them in all the directions to set the endpoints so I've calibrated the gimbals and the pots then we have the trainer mode so if you want you can use this i will be making a video on the trainer mode later on then here we can check the version of the software then we have the diagnose switch page in which you can check if all the switches and the trims are working and then we have the analog page in which you can diagnose the sticks and the ports and here we have the option to calibrate the battery voltage so i'll do that with the voltage meter so the battery is at 11.8 volts so i'll change this to that if i hold the up button we have the start screen in which you can see the timer And if I hold the minus key, we can enter the model list. And if I hold the menu button, we have the model select option followed by model setup. We can go to the last menu from here or enter the radio setup and see the stats. So let's set up a model quickly and see how the binding procedure is. So I've created a new model so that the channels in the mixer screen are in the right order that I've set to the radio settings. And I'll delete the first model by 
holding on to the menu button and selecting delete so I'll move this so the model setup first we have the mixer page so we have the channels in the right order Now one feature that's missing in the ER9X firmware is the auto switch or the auto source feature in which if you toggle a switch or a stick the software can identify that and assign it to the settings. In the ER9X we don't have that but that can be updated in the software. So currently I'll add an arm switch for channel 5. So where it says SRUD that means it's the rudder switch because it has the S at the beginning. Then the SIDX is the three position switch, which is this. And then I've set the aileron switch for channel seven. Then we have the option of heli setup. So if you use this, you can make changes to this. Then we have the limits page in which we can set the sub trim at just the endpoints of the channels. And if you want, we can invert the direction. Then we have the option of expo slash dual rate in which you can assign a curve to the sticks. Then we have the flight modes page followed by the curve page, logical switches, templates, then we have the option to set up safety switches. So if you want, you can use this. So this is something that's not there in the OpenTX firmware followed by the global variables, which again is not there in the OpenTX firmware. Then if you have the voice modification on your radio transmitter, you can use this. And then we have the timer option in which I can assign the time for a certain channel. The next we can name the model over here. If you want to extend the limits of the gimbals, then you can enable this icon and then make changes in the output page. So here we have the option to change the throttle default. So that's set to end, which means the throttle stick when it's set at the bottom will be the default position if I set that to center I'll have to make sure that the throttle is at the center position so I'll set that to end then if you want we can reverse the throttle and adjust the trim type and then we have the protocol settings so in here the first option that we can change is the channel so so you can redirect the first channel on the receiver by selecting a particular number i'll leave this to one then we have ppm xjt if you're using the fr sky module dsm2 protocol for the spectrum based receiver ppm 16 ppm simulator and then we have the multi option so if you have a multi protocol module then you can use this and then s -Bus. so this is something that's missing in the OpenTX firmware and then in the sub protocol we have a plethora of options so we have the original fly sky protocol then fr sky dsm futaba 
and here we can see that we have the second generation of the frequency hopping system from Flysky. So ideally we should be able to use this but for some reason we cannot use this with the FSRM003 module. So like in the stock firmware we can change between the sub protocol like PWM IBUS, PPM IBUS and PWM SBUS and BPM SBUS. But even if I select this, the module does not work. We can switch between the power levels, low and high, and the servo rate frequency, and then the bind option. So if you have a multi-protocol module, then you can use this. And to bind it, you can hold the menu button. But to bind this module that I have, I'll set the protocol to PPM and I'll increase the number of channels to 10 and I'll set the polarity to negative. So now let's bind a receiver and see if it works. So I've set up a new model for my RC car and I'll bind it to the FSI A10B receiver. So I'll plug in the binding adapter. If you want, you can set the polarity to positive or negative. It doesn't matter. But you have to make sure that you have selected the right protocol and the channel number. So after making all the changes over here, I'll exit this menu and I'll turn off the radio transmitter and I'll hold the bind button on the RF module and turn on the radio transmitter. So that way the LED is blinking on the module and then I'll turn on the receiver. So even if I move the sticks, you can see that there is no input. So although the binding is successful, but there is no communication between the radio transmitter and the receiver. So to fix that, I'll turn off the receiver and I'll go to the protocol settings and I'll remove the RF module and then I'll turn on the receiver again, making sure that the binding plug is still connected. So the receiver is in binding mode and, and the radio transmitter is still on and I've set all the settings for the protocol and then I'll hold the bind button on the RF module and then install it on the radio transmitter. And now you can see that if I move the sticks the servo is moving and even the ESC is working so I'll unplug the binding adapter power off the receiver turn off the radio transmitter turn it back on and turn on the RC car so for some reason with the ER9X firmware in spite of selecting the right protocol and the settings, we cannot bind the module in the traditional way. So, so if you plan to use the ER9X firmware for this radio transmitter, and if you have the second generation of the frequency hopping module from Flysky, then you'll have to hold the bind button and then install the module on the radio transmitter once you have set up the protocol settings. And to set fail safe, I'll hold the bind button for 3 seconds. So the fail safe is also working and now I'll try to bind the receiver once more. I'll try it with the stock method. So I'll plug in the binding adapter, power on the receiver and then I'll hold the bind button on the RF module and power up the radio transmitter. So now you can see that it's working. So, so if you're unable to bind your module to the receiver, then you can use the jump start method in which you can hold the bind button on the module and then plug it into the radio transmitter. But otherwise you should be able to bind it with the regular method. And now we'll take a look at how to make changes to the radio transmitter using the app software, just as we would use the OpenKX companion to make changes. So I've connected the USB programmer to the radio transmitter and I've plugged it into the computer. 
So to make changes using the EPE software, just as you would do with the OpenTX companion software, you'll first have to read the memory on the radio transmitter. So I'll click on this icon which says read memory from TX. And here we can see the existing models on the radio transmitter. So to edit a model, you can double click on this or right click and select edit. And if I want, I can name the model and then make changes to the settings if I want. So if you're using a multi-protocol module, then you can mess around with the settings over here. I'll leave this to PPM. And then we have the heli setup mode, export dual rate, mixes, limits, curves, switches, safety switches, trims, a special window for the FR Sky telemetry, then the templates page, global variables, which is missing in the open TX for the TH9X and voice alarms. So after making all the changes to the models, in order to write it to the radio transmitter, we can click on this icon which says write memory to TX. So I'll click on that and say yes. And once that's finished, I can click on OK. And before I close this window, I'll save the models and the settings so that if I want to restore it, I can use the backup file. So I'll click on file and click on save and I'll save that. And then I can close the window. And now if I turn on the radio transmitter, you can see that FPV drone is the model that's set to default. So I've covered how to bind the module to the receiver and I've even covered how to use the EPE software to make changes on the radio transmitter. So now the choice is up to you. You can either use OpenTX firmware or use the ER9X, both of which are a very good alternative to the stock firmware. I personally prefer the ER9X firmware just because it has a few extra features and the updated protocol options. So in case if I want to upgrade the module, I can do that and still be able to use it with this radio transmitter. The only thing I wish ER9X had was the ability to auto detect the switches and the channels, which is something that the OpenTX firmware has. But otherwise, the ER9X and the OpenTX firmware are a very good option for the Flysky TH9X or even the Turnage 9X radio transmitter. So thanks a lot for watching. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel if you're new. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos.